Hello, this is Greg Gallus from Green Greg's coming to you tonight on the 4th of May 2021 with special guest Stacy Zavicki with Sustainable Stewards. And Stacy is here tonight to talk to us about the truth in agriculture. What's really going on? What's what's actually the truth in the story about food production and food availability? And she's coming to us from Wisconsin which is an agricultural center in the state. As you all know, a lot of uh, milk and cheese comes out of Wisconsin. Now, Stacy is a farmer in her own right. She has quite a business as a market farmer and she works for dairy industry and she's got a great YouTube channel. Everybody should check out Stacy. If you wanna know about growing food, storing food, preparing food, Stacy's channel, Sustainable Stewards, carries a lot of information for you I, I really advise you to check her out she's a good she's a good hard uh, uh, lady good smart lady she is tough as nails and smart as they come and uh, she's really stands tall for freedom in fact she's been one of our founding members of the freedom restoration foundation and so i, I really uh, value stacy and her thoughts on a lot of stuff you've seen her on here uh, with me talking about power grid failure risk and things like that in the past i've had her on my channel many times so, uh, and I'll make a quick shameless plug. Guys, it's planting season right now. It's time to garden. Get your gardens ready and go to my yeah. channel and check out in the links below in the show notes and in the pen notes, my links to True Leaf Market to help you grow food yourself because you really need to. Uh, but the prices will be going up. Food may be uh, more available than some channels tell you, Stacy will say, but nevertheless, prices are going up and you want to grow food that you know what you're eating, not the stuff coming out of these stinking corporate farms. So Stacy, right. talk to us. What what is your take on what's really the, the skinny right now in ag production, especially within Wisconsin? Okay, well I I'm gonna I'm gonna start out by saying I'm I'm I I do a lot of refuting on my channel, okay? Um I love a lot of the YouTube channels out there, but bottom line is they're not farmers. Okay. Um and um I'm giving you the perspective of, you know, from a farmer and somebody who works in the dairy industry. And, and um, um, I know a lot of farmers across the country. You know, first off is, is food prices are not going up because we're running out of food. With this time, Greg, you know, you know me, I am all about preparedness and growing your food and being ready for hard times um, if, if something happens. But at this time, there is no fear in the United States from, from here, as from, from the par farmer's perspective of us running out of food. We produce so much food in the United States. I don't think people comprehend. One of the reasons the food prices is going up is, is number one, it's simple in inflation. You know, I mean, I, everything is going up. It's not just bread, it's not just milk. Um, it's, it's plastics, it's nuts, screws and bolts. Ziploc bags. I mean, everything's going up. It's simple inflation. But speaking specifically, when it comes to to uh, the the milk prices, the cheese prices, the meat prices, um, Greg, it's the corporations that are driving the prices up, and they are on purposely manipulating the system to do so. Um, as you know, well, as you know. Um, um, Amazon, Facebook, um, all these Google, all these major conglomerates, right? These big, these big, buy, these big tech companies and stuff. We had the biggest transfer of wealth um, in history over the COVID nonsense. I mean, you, you know this. It's the Great Reset, as they call it. Well, the the food industry, the the, the, the corporate food companies, got in on that and took advantage. I'm going to give you a personal personal testimony of what happened, not this last February, but the February before when COVID first started happening. All right, when COVID first started happening, there was every, everything was kind of running smoothly at that point. There was talk about it. Um, we had uh, January, February, and March. We had the the meat packers calling the farmers begging for old cows because if your people out there don't know um old uh dairy cows are the ones that get made into hamburger all right they they go to be made into hamburger so we had 
meat packers begging us every week they were calling we need more cows we need more cows and i'll bet and, and guess what greg the farmers that i worked for wanted to support the community and we were stepping up selling cows that they probably would have kept another six months to a year but the demand was there and that's what far, that's what farmers do greg we support our country and 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 you do what you got to do so they're, they're calling, begging, we're giving, because now at this time, kids are home from school. Parents are, are making three meals a day versus one meal a day, because in, in schools, they get fed breakfast and lunch. So now parents are doing three meals a day. There is just more of a demand um, um, for meat from the supermarket, because as you know, Greg, the government schools don't get meat from the supermarket. That's a different avenue that they, they, they get it from, okay? So we're getting these calls for three months. All of a sudden, um, the end of March comes and we call, we got cows that need to be shipped. And the meat packers say, well, we're not taking any. And my boss says, well, what do you mean you're not taking any? You just had the last three months, you've been begging us for cows left and right. The demand is there, we know it's there. What's, you know, did you shut down because of COVID? No, we didn't shut down. We had one meat packing plant in Wisconsin that shut down for four days. You wanna know why? Because three people had COVID, they shut it down for three days, they went through, they had to clean. That was part of that, they, they had to be a whole cleaning of the, of, of the facility, which should be done. And it opened back up. We had enough facilities to take the, the cows elsewhere, okay? They shut down for two weeks, Greg, and in that two weeks, B, uh, uh, hamburger went from $2.99 a pound in Wisconsin to $7.99 a pound because, oh. because they manipulated the market and uh, the American people into believing that there was meat shortages and that there was a lack of supply with high demand when we had the supply for the demand. These corporations jacked up the prices. And do you think we, the farmers got, after things kicked in again, got the, the increase in price per pound? Absolutely not. It, 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 they kept, you know, it's the old saying, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. <laughs> you know, there is some truth to that. So Greg, that is my first hand testimony of this last year and a half of during this whole situation of, of how these corporations have taken advantage of the fear that the American people have, number one, for their health, and number two, over the supply chain and how they manipulate it and how a lot of people, including these YouTube channels, are believing that there is a food crisis, but there's not. Um, it's manipulated. Now, I know that there was some farms that had some chicken that they, chickens that they killed and this, this or what, whatnot. But even with that, Greg, the amount of meat and, 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 and crops we produce in this country, it literally is a drop in a, in a thousand gallon, gallon bucket. You know, it, it did not, and it could not have had the effect to jack the prices up because, you know, there was this calling off of animals. It just simply was not true. Um, it, it was market manipulation and that's what this whole situation is about. China is actually okay. driving cost up too because China is buying yeah. huge amounts of grain, especially soybean. They were buying it from Argentina and Brazil and yeah. production fell. And so they're buying it now up here. And yeah. So there, there are external, it's not a, a food production, but the demand is going up. Demand from China yeah. in part because yeah. they're feeding hogs. Uh, and right. Of course, demand here, as you mentioned, has gone up. So there's a huge demand, but you know. So and, and in the future, I might see issues as we are eroding our topsoil. Uh, here, a third yep. of the Midwest, about 35 percent, really don't have any topsoil at all. They're just right. the subsoil right. is a holder for their crops as they pour chemicals in it. So right. the, thing that, the thing that worries me the most about food, the, the potential for food shortage, the reason I tell people to prep is what happens when the grid goes down you know right now we have the agriculture is an amazing machine but it runs yes. on power and fuel yes and, and yes fertilizer is made from like natural gas and and, and you know right. the tractors require a lot of fuel to pass back right. and forth across the right. field so many times to, to uh 
prep the soil for planting the plant to uh, uh, to spray all the junk they spray on it, which we don't need no part of. And then they come back, right. harvest it, you know, and then they, they there's just a lot of running back and forth with tractors and a lot of fuels consumed. And yep. then they have to store it. And a lot of times that yep. requires a lot of energy to maintain it when it's in storage. Uh, so there's a lot of steps in the process, the processing of it, all of that requires energy and fuel, which becomes uh, part of the cost and that's going up. But right. if the grid goes down, you don't have any of that. You don't, you're no, be, no. Uh, and if, if you are going to prep, that is a reason to prep. You yeah. know, yes, prep, because if you buy, if you bought food three years ago, if you bought dried beans three years ago, you bought them at a reduced price and, and you're money saving money. That's you a reason money to prep. prep because, right, it's money in the bank. Prep because, yes, we possibly could get hit by an EMP or we could have war, okay? Um, one lot. of the things I do, one of the things I do want to give some people hope is even if even if we have world war terrible war i am telling you greg and i promise you this with all my heart that that especially wisconsin and i know other states have this a a a, a nation's army is only as strong as the farmers that support them all right the number one thing that will go into the united states as far as protection goes it's going to be of course our gas supplies our natural resources and farming Farms will be a, uh, a major source of protection by our US military and, and our government will want them to continue. I know here in Wisconsin, we got contingency plans for war. We got contingency plans at the state level and we got contingency plans at the local county levels as well. Um, so I, 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 like, I tell people, um, don't, I mean, of course, none of us want war to come, but don't think because it comes, your food is going to stop like that. Okay. Prepare for it, but, you know, be prepared for it, but also remember that agriculture is the backbone of our society. It literally is. I mean, I can't, um, I, I can't say that enough that our farms, there, there's protection plans in place to keep farms up and running. Even in a grid down, Greg, here in Wisconsin, we have preparations for farms in certain counties to stay up and running in a grid garden situation. How are they going to get the fuel? Um, we have here in central Wisconsin, the major, the, 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 the point distribution center for the UP, Minnesota, Illinois, Wisconsin, and parts of Iowa, uh, the tank farm for the fuel. We have a major fuel supply here in central Wisconsin. You still have to pump it and you'll have to resupply it. I mean, you might be good for a year, maybe two. Right. Then what happens? Uh, if you lose right. enough transformers, it may take 10 years to prepare. I mean, you're right. The farm is the yeah. backbone. Of course, it's the adversary's uh, intention to break your backbone if they can. Right, right. And, and the worst and, uh, way they can hit us is the yeah. fire grid. And I'm not saying they can't do that. And I'm and and and, and I'm telling you, those big 10,000, 30,000 cow dairies will be gone like that. But the small family farms that support the communities, the, the, they will be, people will rally to keep them up and going. So and that, our community, that's really it right there. That's really it. The small family farms, because yeah. especially the small plot farms, you don't necessarily need tractors and fuels. So I did a, a video sometime back called the Small Farm Advantage. And I was talking about how even even with the vagrancies of weather, be it a grand solar minimum or whatever, hey, if yeah. your main tool is, is is hand, you know, I, I had a picture of my my hand, what I call my hand pillar. It don't require any power yeah. except what I can put in the hand. Exactly. And and you know what? You can run a yeah. farm like that, at least a market garden type farm to produce vegetables and feed yeah. people like yeah. your farm that you own personally. Uh, you, you'd be surprised yeah. how much you can do with hand tools. And I have had a lot of emphasis yeah. telling people to buy hand tools. I've done several yeah. videos on that. Uh, yeah. the, the value of hand tools, hand power tools. Uh, I, Greg, I got, I got what's called a stand and plant. I encourage anybody that um, is over 40 that wants to preserve their body to go out and get a, it's called a stand and plant. I can plant 600 tomatoes in 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 just under 300 three hours with that thing 
600 tomatoes in under three hours. It's got a handle. It's got one of those little planters in the bottom kind of thing. And then just it's it's it. it's a cylinder tube yeah. made of quality good metal. It's got a it's got a hook a, a, a little trigger on it. You drop your plant, you know, nice size plant through the top. You, you know, punch it down into the soil. You open it up and the soil covers around it on its own. You don't have to bend over to plant. Not, you know, just, you just, bam. And if you got an assistant to hold the tray for you and you're just, you're just going, I mean, you can fly, you can fly. And I, I and guys, I believe you should have all those trees. You, you should be prepared, but people need to prepare for the right reasons. I, Greg, I just said to you before we started, I feel Americans and especially a lot of YouTubers out there, they're running around like chickens with their head cut off. And, you know, cause they're listening to this one and that one. And, 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 and my advice to people is, is to stay focused, stay centered on the goal, run your race and stop being distracted by, by every um, uh, acclaim. You know, one, one in particular, Greg, um, this last, um, I'm going to actually, there, put my light on, um, was, you know, this Oregon bill everybody was talking about that, oh, they're gonna limit access to animals and this and that. It absolutely it was not the fact. Number one, in agriculture, as we discussed, there are hundreds and hundreds of bills that are 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 brought out or brought up, and and maybe if one percent of them even gets passed, you're lucky. There's a lot of crazy bills out there, Greg, and you know as well as I do. Um, some of them are real threats, and others are just nonsensical that will never even get to a vote. And there's this a way to tell. There's a way to tell. And I've talked about this in a lot of videos. And uh, the way to tell is, one, one now, our Freedom Restoration Foundation, we've got a lot of bills listed. And you can go, and I show you in there how to check into Congress and how to look up bills, how to contact your congressman, how to write letters. All that stuff is yeah. in our action page if you want to find these things. But what you do is you go and you look at these bills and you see how many sponsors they got. There's tons of bills yeah. that got one sponsor. That bill ain't going nowhere. If it's got two or three, right. it's probably not. But if it's got right. people lining up behind it, watch out. That bill's coming through. That's what you watch for. That's how you know what's really going to happen. And and, right. and the best way right. to stop something, though, of course, is to nip it in the bud. So what happens is, is a congressman okay. or a senator will introduce a bill into a subcommittee. Now, sometimes they just do introduce a bill as a point of political favor to somebody or so they can crow about it back home. I introduced this bill, blah, 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 blah. And they know it's not going anywhere. But they, they don't stop them crowing about it. So the next thing is, if they're serious, it's going to uh, it get sponsors and it gets voted uh, out of that committee, uh, subcommittee, right. the full committee. Well, it's got to go through the full committee before it goes to the floor to get voted on. So you yes. have several yes. chances to kill a bill, uh, and it's best to nip them in the bud in their infancy. And uh, yep. our Restoration Foundation gives you the tools to, to discover these things and find That's out where, right. they are, where they're going and tells you how to deal with them. We, we, That's we right. cover that. And, and you know, like there was one bill about the bang bang control that a lot of people were concerned about called HR 127. You know, it only had one sponsor and never got co sponsored. Right. In the meantime, right. other bills that were real threats were coming up. So everybody's focused right. on it and ain't going nowhere. Right. Other stuff coming up. And in. some of them aren't even bills. Some are what's called an IP, which is just a petition to bring forth to, to make it a bill. It's not even a bill yet, you know. Um, this, this, I'm going to talk about one particular bill out in Oregon. All right. And um, this bill that everybody's talking about that is going to prohibit animal, you know, ownership and, and it's talking about, um, you know, raising animals humanely and, and this and that. There's just a lot of misconception about it. Number one, this bill was brought forth um, due to the fact that there's a, there's a huge corporate farm out there called Lost Valley Farm, all right? Over the past five years, this farm has committed major envir environmental atrocities. Now, Greg, they themselves have over 30,000 cows on this farm. 30,000 cows. This how, is many a acres, how many acres is that farm? Well, they, they obviously have they thousands of acres, but the 30,000 cows are concentrated in a CAFO and a confinement operation. Oh, I hate okay. those feedlots. They, they, cattle That's feedlots right. being worse than pig pens, and they're very inhumane. Right. The corporate farms do that. Yeah. And, and they and give bad names. They give yeah. bad names to everybody else because yeah. they maintain these cattle 
in these feedlots, they have to fill them, fill them full of uh, antibiotics and all other yeah. kind of mess. Yeah. And uh, they, they pump hormones into them. And that's what contaminates our food supply. Right. And, and, then, and then because of that, because they've got all the bacteria around them, uh, they get to be issues. And what happens? They go right. around. The, the big industries then use that as an excuse to go back and pass all kind of legislation to regulate farms for food right. safety. And who bears the back run of the small farms? Because, it is, it is. And the small farms don't even have these problems, but the small yeah. farms get to, to get the heat on it. And what happens is suddenly small farms have got so much regulations to respond to, it, it, it risks putting them out of business. Right. And the big farms get more market share to bring you more of the same old crap. And, and that's the threat. And the, the farm that's next door to this farm, which is another corporate farm, has 70,000. So you're, you're talking 370,000 cows in a small area. And they, they committed environmental atrocities. And guys, Gross. if you are a true farmer, you love the land. You love the earth. You want to steward the earth and you want to care for it. And you want to care for your animals. That's that's our heart. A true farmer's heart is to steward, okay? What this bill seeks to do is put a cap at 2,500 cows. Anything under that is considered an agricultural farm, a family farm. Anything over that, Greg, is considered industry, all right? Now, by calling these, which they are, corporate industries, these CAFOs, right, calling them that, now they come under corporate industry environmental laws, which are held to a very high standard as they should be, okay? Because now here, down in the township of Saratoga, which is about an hour south of me, there for years, the community had been fighting a farm, a corporate farm, a big confinement operation coming in because Number one, where this area is, you can go eight feet and that's where the water table is, right? The water table is very low. It's very sandy. Um, it is not like here where we're clay and our wells here are 350, 400 feet deep. We're very deep here. Down there, they're at eight feet. So what happened is, is years prior when a 10,000 uh, cow dairy was an hour south of that, within three years, the well water was contaminated. And all the residents in that area had to have these, you know, $10,000 um, um, uh, filtration system put in their house because they destroyed the well water. Well, the communities fought this farm coming in. And the farm, of course, we own this land. You can't tell us what to do with this land. And you, you and I, Greg, are freedom lovers and we believe in liberty. But we have liberty up into the point yeah. that liberty harms others. Yeah. And you cannot allow these corporate farms to come into these these places like this with the low water uh, tables, destroy the water. And this bill in Oregon, Greg, seeks to 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 curve the tide of the corporate farm. But we got all these YouTube uh, people out there saying that this this is going to destroy the small family farm. And they're taking the homesteaders ability to own a flock of chickens or have three cows in the field, which is preposterous. It's, it's just not what this is. So, uh, you know, I encourage people when you are listening to these channels, understand most of them are they're not even farmers. They may even have the name farmer in their in their title and they're not farmers. And, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this and some people will get upset just because you produce your own uh, uh, vegetables. Maybe you have a cow that doesn't mean you're a farmer, quote, OK? A farmer is somebody who produces for multiple families or others, is a producer. I'm not saying that you're not producing for your family, but there's a difference between a homesteader and farming, okay? And I'm not saying that one is less than the other, but you cannot sit there and, 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 and take advice from these people as it is, as Blake, and not do your research and find out these things. You know, because it's just like over the winter when Texas got hit, Greg, they, they, these channels were screaming, oh, the winter wheat, you know, it's it's all going to be destroyed. It's destroyed. And the winter wheat is called winter wheat because it can stand right. minus 30 to 40 below temperatures, Greg. Not, not a darn thing happened to the Texas or Oklahoma wheat um, um, crop. 
at all, even with that, you know, the bad storms they had. It's just fine. Winter wheat goes dormant. It's it's planted late September, October, November. Um, it gets about a root system about yay big. It goes dormant in the winter and it wakes up after um, you have um, um, about two weeks of 50 plus degree days or whatever, you know, um, 40 plus days. Um, so nothing happened, but these channels were out there screaming that the sky was falling. This is why I wanted to come on here, Greg, because I, I want to encourage people to stay the course. If you hear this allegation that something's happening here, it's going to be devastating, like the storms in Iowa last summer. Yeah, they got hit in Iowa, but it was a drop in the bucket. It was a very small percentage because here's the thing, Greg. That corn that was knocked over like this, guess what? Corn, farmers know corn has the ability to come back up after the ground dries. It, it will follow the sun just like just like a, a, a uh, sunflower. You know how they follow the sun? A lot of that corn came back up and those farmers were able to harvest it. So I'm going to turn my light back on here. I'm in my truck, people, because... I got a grandson in my house and it's good time. The first, first corn I ever harvested and sold was from where a storm knocked it down. And I went in and picked it off the ground and put it in my old 54 Ford and took it to a granary and sold it. I still got the receipt. <laughs> yep. And and Greg, a lot of the combines that are out there, they the have the I couldn't to... get that. It didn't that corn didn't come back up, but you know, I, I imagine some of it would, but that corn was, right. was broken. You know, if you break the stalk, yeah, sure. if you break it off the stock, it's done. Yeah. But um, a lot of it came back up. It's just, I, I have to say, you know, even there's there's a lot of sensationalism about solar minimum. And I'm in Wisconsin, so guess what? I believe in solar minimum. But as I said earlier, there is no proof, number one, that we are in a grand solar minimum. You, there's no proof of that until years later, number one, okay? Um, we are in a solar minimum. Whether it's a grand or not, we don't know yet. But we have challenges we don't have the sky is falling at the end of agriculture as we know it we have dozens of growing zones in the united states dozens and even here in wisconsin we're up in a cold climate and um this what year your zone? what is your zone there i am zone four and actually i could be considered zone uh 3b mm. we're right right on the cusp of that now you're in northern so, you're in northern wisconsin right yes yes and greg the last uh uh last year we had record breaking harvests and, and you, know, you can change your crops I, I lived in alaska for two years and they had what they called a barley project up there they they actually yeah. had farms that grew barley in alaska and i'm gonna tell you what up there you only had about three months that you didn't have snow on the ground right I mean, nine right. months out of the year you lived in a christmas card but yep. of course, the daylight was longer in those uh, uh, three yep. months that you had no snow on the ground, so things really did grow. But it was it was <laughs> it was an interesting place. I mean, the winter time, uh, the first winter I was up there in the housing area on the main post, we got to ambient temperature seventy nine degrees Fahrenheit below zero, and yeah, it isn't that something? Eighty below. That's not wind chill. That is ambient. Right. <laughs> and they had a barley project. They actually grew barley. And there were some dairies up there too, but now. It was tough. Everything in Alaska is tough. Now, I'm not making no bones about it. You know, uh, uh, that would be rough on uh, regular farms to, to make that adjustment. But it's it's there's things that can be done, especially with greenhouses. So hey, I shipped worms to Alaska last spring. Right. Uh, right. Now to, to talk about farming, you can see my fingernails are probably I don't know you might see. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to clean them out before we did our video, but they were still a little bit dirty. I mean, I just harvested worms, some worms today. And today's the last day I dare do it. Now I'm only shipping local, but uh, yeah, I'm just now returning to my worm farm. I've been shipping, you know, last year I was shipping worms all over the United States. I'm shipping worms all over the United States again. I mean, to Alaska, Puerto Rico, uh, Hawaii is an exception because Hawaii will only take blue worms. I can't ship red oh. to Alaska. I mean, to right. Hawaii. Uh, uh, now, you know, there are, there are some blues mixed in with mine, but not enough to, to ship down there. Now, maybe I can figure out how to sort them and culture them and, and create a an Hawaiian bed. I had a guy who really wanted to buy a lot from me there. But I guess being a, that makes me a producer and definitely a, definitely a farmer in that regard. I've been shipped worms for years, but I shut down last year because of the post office. And 
now I've had to hire a new crew and they're all greenhorns and my trommel is uh, had to be re redone. I had a guy promise me and have it running net last week. Didn't happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and I actually bought another trommel as a backup and that thing moves like a glacier. And by wow. the time anything gets down the end, all the worms are falling through with the, with the worm castings and I got nothing. It's like, really? I got to put another motor wow. on. Me. So I wow. got busted trommels basically. And uh, the guy that was, that was trying to fix some other trauma, I'm still on crutches. And so I'm having a hard time with this. I wasn't able to do as much as I'd wanted to uh, in terms of training my new crew. And they, they don't really know how to dig for worms yet. And so we were bringing back a lot of stuff. It didn't have the good worm to compost ratio they should have had. And we're, so we're sitting there trying to harvest by hand. And I paid over, uh, I paid probably five or $600, close to $600 in labor just to harvest six pounds of worms. So if you bought worms from and you're getting worms, yeah, <laughs> you got a deal this time. I'm trying to keep the customers happy, but I'm not making my orders yet. I'm gonna have to send out an email and 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 to my guys and give them an option. Do they want a refund or do they want me to? Yeah, yeah, it, it, shipping. That's that's that shipping is a big thing. I know I had issues with my seeds this year with shipping and the price, just the price to ship. Oh, um, yeah. you know, but you know, I also you know I sell. I use PayPal when people pay through the internet. And they take a pretty substantial fee out. Uh, yeah. And if I refund, they keep the fee. So that really stinks. They didn't use it. Yeah. Out. So it's a yeah. loss. So, you know, I'm starting out it, it behind so much that actually I'm uh, I'm having to defer my, my house payment this month. I'll catch it up. But right now, it's, right. it's it, I'm straining just to get it going. It'll, it'll yeah. Catch up. This trauma will be fixed. I think we're just down now to getting that pulley positioned right. Uh, and, and, but you know, we had to rebuild the tube, uh, which, uh, you know, look, my DIY trommel, uh, may look like holy heck, but it beats the heck out of that when I bought, uh, because when it's running, it runs, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but the whole thing had been wore out. It was all DIY built out of bicycle wheel hoops and, 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 and pieces of the blue flute grade barrels and, and screen wire and that Dexion, you know, type of flat, holy, uh, metal. And it's mm -hmm. all wore the heck out. I mean, I used it for seven years, but it just wore this maybe a little bit, maybe eight. That thing just wore the heck out. I used to harvest everything by hand, just breaking it off. But you got to be really good to get that right. And my hands just, yeah. aren't, aren't, my new hands just aren't there yet. They'll they'll get the knack for it and we'll get this operation running right. Right, Especially when right. Especially we'll running. And maybe I'll get another motor and I'll have two traumas running and we can really cook. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we're just having the startup pains, and that's not uncommon. But a lot of people think business is just everything is hunky dory, and people are making gobs of money, and it's a fight. It's a struggle, yeah. especially if you're it's, a small farmer. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a struggle. You know, like I, I don't know what you know, because I have my own milk cow, and, and and so I don't buy milk. But if 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 milk is five dollars a gallon, it's just for example. You know the the farmer doesn't get paid that the farmer get paid gets paid pennies on the five dollars. You know we get the, the farmer gets paid per a hundred per hundred, which is per per hundred pounds. Okay, right now it's we're sitting at about uh, fourteen fifty fifteen dollars per hundred. Uh, the futures market is saying that it's supposed to go up to nineteen, which would be good. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, a back and forth. One of the things I like to tell people is food is not cheap people and it shouldn't be. All right. Uh, 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 false inflation. Okay. Is, is, is bad. All right. But if you're buying food from a, a local sustainable farmer, that's growing produce, that's growing meats, or you can find a small dairy that sells direct you should be willing to pay five, six dollars for a gallon of milk because it costs to produce that milk. And then the farmer actually gets a living wage. It's a fair living wage, which the way the system is now, they don't get they don't get that. And this is why we have no new farmers coming up because they can't get, first generation farmers can't get into it because the amount of debt debt is so significant land caught prices right now are are skyrocketed um you know you if you're going to be a dairy farmer in wisconsin you have to be second third fourth generation or you're not getting in yeah, yeah i'll say one of the bad things though is they're trying to tax the farmers of their capital gains on the the inflated price of land that's been inflated because of land speculation yeah. on the homes which don't equate to farming. 
a farmer's annual income, even the bigger, you know, family farms is, is minuscule. They're just scraping by right. and on the books, they're, they're millionaires. And so some of the taxes are at risk of paying for shutting down a lot of the family farms. And so right. I, I think the corporate farms are probably behind pushing that too. So yeah, the, gotta, the corporate farms are the enemy. And, and that's, yes. um, it's, it's not, and I was going to say this people, it's not your government. That's the enemy either, but the, the government is culpable. Okay. Because we got corporate lobbyists that go to DC that go to the state level and they lobby to, to, to be coddled, to have, uh, to get passes when the small farmer doesn't. And, and that's the problem we have. And then we have the government. Okay that subsidizes the corporate farms. They get free money, Greg. They get tons of free money and the government price fixes the food prices. So this is, here's a reality. And I've said this on my channel over and over, over and over. People want to say we aren't a socialistic or communist society. Well, guess what? <laughs> Absolutely we are. Our agricultural system has been communist since the 1930s when government came in and started fixing prices and doing subsidies to, you know, it's the whole system is fixed. It is a, it is a socialized system and people don't have an understanding of that. If the free market was allowed to exist in agriculture, small farmers would be thriving and the corporate farmers would be out of business because nobody want to pay for it. Nobody want to pay for crap food. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you just said crap food. You know, so, so as people get perspective, what do you get when you buy corporate farms? You're getting food that is mass produced, uh, not for quality. It, it don't have high, it's low nutrition. I mean, they're basically, they're, they're just fertilizing the fields, the NPK fertilizers uh, over and over and over. They're not putting in all the, 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 the micronutrients, the minerals, that uh, the compost, right. the good stuff that the organic farmer, that somebody growing naturally would. They're just they're, right. they're just trying to produce volume, and they, they, right. and so the food you get is devoid of nutrition. It, it's, it's, it, they they breed and select the crops so they'll live a long time on the shelf, but they're not the good, tasty, nutritious, delicate right. stuff that you would get from a smaller farmer. You'll get far yeah. tastier, better vegetables that are more nutritious from the small farmers. Right, and right. Get this devoid nutrition stuff. Uh, you know, because your body's still lacking, it's craving other stuff, and so you overeat. Right. And this is why we're having so much obesity in our, our country. It's also your food's your medicine. So if you're not getting the nutritious food right. that you really need, you're having health issues aside from the obesity because right. you're not getting right. the nutrition you need for your body to operate. You're not getting the, yeah. the nutrients. Uh, one thing that we're highly deficient in America <laughs> is magnesium. So yes. I really, that causes a lot of heart problems. A lot of people, their hearts race and different. I, I had that problem myself at one point. And when I discovered that I started eating more tree nuts because trees pull from deep down where there's right. still minerals and you get more yes. magnesium that way. Yep. And so that pretty, that was one of the key things that helped solve my problem. I had a couple other things I had to do to adjust it, but I've not had so much issue. With right. The heart right. Now. And, and industry farmer also, okay, don't, Guess what? Weeds aren't always our enemy, Greg. What people don't understand in weeds and crops actually have a symbiotic relationship. Weeds pull minerals deep from within the soil. Weed, weeds uh, are, they are the, the mineral builders. Especially right? dandelions. Dandelions yes. is the best one. Yeah. What is every Roundup commercial show killing a dandelion? A and dandelion a dandelion is not a weed, by any it's any way shape or form. plants you'll ever have yeah. Why they always show them killing the dandelion a dandelion's yeah. a gift if you got a dandelion in your yard codify coddle it coddle it yeah. you want it it's to a gift from god it, it's 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 it not only supports the poll pollinators you can you can eat you can you can consume every part of the the from the flower to the leaves to the root i harvest and i have videos on harvesting dandelions i dry the root um, I, I, I dry the leaves and I make uh, tea and I dry the flowers. I make tinctures and, and, and all that kind of stuff from, from um, dandelions. Um, hey, hey, everybody, do subscribe to Ch Stacey's channel. By all means, go check it out. Sustainable Stewards. Sustainable Stewards. We're talking about stewardship. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, bang the bell. Subscribe, bang the bell and click the update notification yeah. button. Do it with both channels. And, and I encourage people not to get angry when I don't make a video for two or three weeks, guys, because I'm actually a farmer. 
And, and here's here's the thing. If you're watching a YouTube channel and they claim to be farmers and they're making a video every day, guys, they're probably not a farmer because we don't have that kind of time to do that. We just don't have, it, you know, with editing and stuff like that, it can take two to three hours to do that. And that's that's a lot of time. And this is the busy season. This is the planting season. Um, I'm getting my farm store up and running here. Um, there's, there's lots of stuff going on. So I'm a little busy right now. I'm trying to, at a minimum, put out two videos a month uh, right now. Um, and then, of course, when things settle down, I, I put out more, you know. But uh, Greg, I did want to comment before we leave on CRP land, okay? Because there's a, there's, a, there's a big conversation about this. And what you will see on YouTube channels or in the headlines is government's paying farmers not to farm land. Oh, you know, we're going to run out of food, okay? This is called CRP land. Now, Greg, these are lands that shouldn't have been farmed to begin with. But because land prices are inflated, right, and farmers are forced to, to either rent or buy land that is less desirable for agriculture, they farm maybe a, an area that's a lowland that shouldn't be farmed, where you have a lot of erosion, or um, it's, it's wet, and what ends up happening is you can't get the hay dry, right, so it molds. Or it's wet, so they plant corn in it, and the corn gets knee high, and it never really grows because it's too wet. It's it's a, a an area of environmental concern that really should not have been farmed in the first place. Okay, so what C, what the CRP program is? It's a program by the USDA that pays farmers not in money. They give them a tax break on their taxes to say, hey. You got that 10 or 20 acres there. We're going to give you a tax break so you can go out and maybe rent or lease another property because we know you want to farm it, but it's not it's not yielding. So we're we're going to give you a break. It's actually, and now listen, I don't believe in government programs. Okay, I don't. But if you believe in and that the government should help the farmers because if if you believe in grants and things like that, that if, if the farmer supported the community strong, if you believe in government programs that support farmers, then you should actually believe in this program because it allows the farmer then to go out and look for other land that he otherwise wouldn't or she have money to lease or expand into production. Do you understand what I'm saying, Greg? So it's not that the government is coming out and they are paying farmers to go out of business. That's not what this is. It's a simple, it's called CRP, land management. And you can look it up. We have farmers in this area that are a part of it uh, because um, it allows them to go and have the money to lease land elsewhere and produce. Um, I don't have a problem with state grants for farmers because most of the grants go before the voters here in Wisconsin. The voters get to say, you know, do you want to support your farms? We're going to we're going to allot X amount of your tax money for farms. And God, Greg, here in Wisconsin, our citizens support farmers. If there is one thing that you need to know about Wisconsin cheeseheads, is that we are pro-farm and we love our farmers and we will fight for them, man. Even, even the liberals in Madison and Milwaukee love our farmers, you know? So, you know, um, it is- butter it's just, the site butter especially right <laughs> yeah butter and you know but one of the things i love i love my steak greg because it yes it is number one dairy cheese yogurt yes but we are the number one producer of cranberries number one producer of ginseng marathon county is the biggest ginseng producer in the united states and that's just north of me wow. um we are very diverse we we produce uh, a lot of potatoes we have huge potato land here that's south of, of me, about an hour. We produce a lot of carrots. We're just very diversified here. And I, you know, I tell people we have more cows than we have people. That's why we, when we talk about EMP, Greg, I, am, I, I tell people, you need to stay in Wisconsin. You don't need to be going south because we have the agriculture. Even, even if them big farms end up having to call, and get rid of their cows, guess what? 
people are going to be eating okay for two, three years here in Wisconsin. And I, I've, I've told my friends, listen, when the hordes leave, we're still going to have a lot of cows. We still have a lot of infrastructure here. And, um, I, you know, that's, as long as they don't put a bang bang on them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this is why I, I had, I had an actual nice message. Um, I had a message from a gal from California last week. She was concerned about the solar minimum and, and moving back to her, her husband's family's from Wisconsin and moving here from California because she was worried about the agriculture and she was worried about possible EMP. And, and this is what I tell people, guys. Do not worry about so solar minimum in cold states. We are more equipped than you, Greg, down in Alabama to endure solar minimum. Our water pipes are, are, are 10 feet deep below the frost line. OK, we've got, you know, wood heating systems. Every house up here has a wood burner. Every, every one, even though even the older folks that maybe have, uh, you know, forced propane, you know, forced air propane, they still have an old wood stove in their basement that they can light up. You know, we have the, the, the varieties of seeds for our crops that are cold hardy that can take, you know, the, the extended. I say, I say like, it's, we're supposed to get frost tonight. We got to the 15th of May is the last frost date. Mm. Last year, we went over that by a week. Okay. It's of no consequence. We've got the varieties of seeds to withstand that. Um, Curtis Stone is one that, that agrees with me on that, that when it comes to agriculture, don't, don't be worried about the infrastructure about you know, producing in cold because we're equipped for it. Our equipment's equipped for it. Um, we can talk about greenhouses. One of the things I'm going to tell you, Greg, greenhouses are are fantastic in a moderate place. But like, if you got like what I have, I have a high tunnel. You better dang well know how to 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 care for it because when you got a 15 foot drift coming off that sucker in the winter time, if you can't take care of that it's going down. So greenhouses up in Wisconsin necessarily are not the answer to solar minimum, but um, having good heirloom seeds that you have acclimated to the climate and the conditions year after year. Greg, two years ago, we had a really cold, wet year. I saved every um, viable tomato that was exposed to blight that I could harvest and save those seeds. And I inoculated them from that specific variety of blight. I will never have that blight on my property again because I inoculate them and I reuse those seeds. I've got how, did to make them. how did you inoculate them? All inoculating is, is being exposed to something, Greg. You expose it to the disease. Right. You find the one or two plants that that, that survive, you save those seeds. Those babies, right? I call them babies, those seeds, that next generation seed has got the inoculant. It's been it's been vaccinated, so to speak. Okay. Again, you know, I, I, unfortunately I had all my tomatoes wiped out by tobacco mosaic virus. So <laughs> I, wish okay. I, I wish I had one that survived it. But I did right. they all got wiped out because somebody handled them that shouldn't have been handling them. <laughs> Ah, and, and that's, and that, it, Greg, that is why I'm encouraging city folks to not partake in the community gardens, that they, they put their garden, and it, no matter how tiny their front yard is, if you're on a building, up high, whatever, to do their own, because what you will have is people that come in that don't, they don't take care of their portion of the garden, right? They get blight, they get disease, and it spreads to the rest of them. Oh yeah, okay. some of that stuff like the tobacco mosaic virus will live in the soil. You can't plant on that plot and that raised bed tomatoes or any nightshade plant for three years. Three years. Yeah. yeah. It takes that long for it to die out. So but, I, I've got two sets of beds both been wiped out. Good crop rotation. You should never have one species of 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 produce in the same spot, but for every four years, you should have a four year cycle. So any disease can be be mitigated by yeah. proper, you know, crop rotation. So yeah, um, but guys, long story short, don't fear solar minimum. We have challenges, but it is not the death of agriculture in Wisconsin. We simply can't with the amount of growing zones we have um, be wiped out as a whole. 
Um, we're adapting very well to the challenges. You know what? Last year when we made hay, we wrap, we had to wrap our hay. We, we didn't have enough warm days with sun and wind to dry out our hay to have dry round bales or dry square barrels. So what do we do? We had to wrap it with a, it's a plastic wrap that goes around it and becomes, then at that point it becomes haylage. Now I don't like to have to do those things because it's not a renewable thing, right? Wrapping with plastic is not, it's, it is, you, I have to pay $6 extra a bale to have that, that done. All right. And I don't like the plastic. I don't like to have to do that. But if it comes between me not being able to, to get a crop in and not feed my animals or spending an extra six, six dollars and then recycling that plastic, I will do so. Okay. Um, and, and this is another reason food prices are going up because when we make hay, we have to wrap the hay more. But now here's, I have actually found, and I, I, I logged this year dramatically. So haylage, when you wrap your hay, it's not quite all the way down. You're about 40% moisture. Okay, Greg. But it, re, it retains all the that vital nutrients and vitamins. It's like opening, you open that thing up in the winter and you stick your hand in it and it's warm because it actually oh, yeah. ferments. So it, it, it creates a good flora for the gut or the cow or the whoever, whatever you're feeding it to. And it's green. It's as green as the day that you harvested it. Okay. Wow. My cows in our cold climate up here, normally in Wisconsin, you get to February and March and your cows start to lose weight because now they're, they're trying to stay warm. Right. And I didn't have a cow. Am I 15 year old milk cow, Greg, she's going to be actually 16 this spring. She managed to gain 150 pounds over the winter. Wow. Because she was feeding this, this vitamin rich, mineral rich haylage. So while I don't like to use it, there's benefits to it as well. Okay. So I'm just, I, I say all that to say this, guys, the sky is not falling on agriculture today in Wisconsin, unless we get hit by an EMP, of course. <laughs> yeah, EMP is different. Yeah. One of the things that bothers me about EMP is that we get all these seeds from now single sources, like, you know, Montesano or Bayer, whoever they become. Right. Uh, that, that's their agreement. You have to sign up when you get the seeds through their program. And when you're got to spray the, the you know, the, the glyphosate, you know, uh, Roundup. Glyphosate, yep. Glyphosate, yeah. So, so when you're spraying that stuff, uh, yeah, you've got to sign contracts with them and you have to buy your seeds and they won't let you save them. And uh, yeah. a whole lot of our crops are that way. Suddenly, if you can't get a hold of these seeds, these farmers aren't going to be growing all this stuff. But there's a, there's a there's a there's a prepper solution to this that I urge all preppers to consider. If suddenly the farmers can't grow their main crops because they don't can't get the seeds because the supply chain's broken, if because uh, they can't get the fuel to run their tractors, here's what you do: you go to the farmers, you buy a seed, you have a good store of seed. Then you go to these farmers and say, hey, can I share a crop a portion of your field? Right. You can't grow crops in it. We got people to feed. I got seed. And uh, yeah. I could go there and, and share crop your field and you get part of it and I get part of it. And yeah. uh, and then it's a win-win. You can still eat. You can still feed people. And they've got some kind of crop growing. And they don't have tractors. They got your labor and the labor of whoever right. you employ. And, and, and so we're going back more to the old way of doing things. Yeah. The old share cropping model. And uh, that's a win-win. And it, it may not yep. be people as fast, but it will take care of a lot of stuff. And you'd be surprised. Well, you know, we're really maybe too dependent on grain agricultural anyway. So you'll be growing more fresh vegetables. You can, of course, you can grow corn and wheat and such as that. Save seeds. Save, get, buy millet. Buy sorghum. Buy, yeah. buy wheat. Buy, you know, uh, you know, hey, if you're worried about it getting colder, buy, uh, uh, what was it, uh, barley. <laughs> yeah, barley, winter wheat. Um, winter you wheat. know, there's... Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, right. And you know, a, a 50 pound bag of barley seed or, or winter wheat, do you know how far, far a 50 pound bag of, of barley will That's plant? If you have the, a proper seeder, if, even if you have the old fashioned bag that you, that you turn, right. You, right. you could do a 20 acres. If you, right. I grow <laughs> right in the wintertime. So, I put it in my aquaponic, outdoor aquaponic system because it survives the snow, the ice, the, what wipes out everything else. And it's yes. green and keeps my fish alive. So I actually plant rye grass in my aquaponic system. And, and 
hey, it don't take many seeds. I'll buy a pound of seed and I don't even, I don't, because that's why they sell it. I don't hardly use but a fraction of it. And yeah, why it's, it's, you can grow you can grow that in the winter time at least it goes rice. it goes even even conventional corn guys if you're gonna if you're gonna buy corn and you, say you just want to buy a hundred pounds of corn for for preparedness purposes get what's called heirloom is the best but heirloom also is a marketing thing too and people are making more money than they should off of that it's simply conventional greg open conventional air yeah open air pollinated or conventional corn is just, it's the same thing and up here we have our small farms do, grow pretty much conventional around here it's only the big guys that are doing the gmo my boss my boss phil greg he's got 70 percent of his if his property which he which he he farms about 300 acres we milk about 200 cows okay um and he's got 70 percent of it in no till no till farming so um his at year three he was very trepidatious about getting into the no-till uh you know movement but at year three his yields you know tripled and wow. um it's he's been gradually trying to do his entire property you know his entire acreage no-till but farmers can't just do that overnight the drill it's it's the seed drills that you need to do that are very expensive um, see, and that's that's another thing, Greg. We as citizens need to en con encourage um, our states. I don't mind paying five dollars extra in taxes to have grants so that farmers can buy a a no-till seed drill so they can go no-till and preserve the soil. Okay, I, I we as civic as citizens sh we shouldn't have a problem with that you are an active member of society and you are buying from small family farms you should want to support those farmers not just not only by buying from them but if they need a piece of equipment and they don't have money to get that equipment we should be supporting those those endeavors of those people cuz i mean greg we're talking thousands of dollars and of course it's the corporations that have inflated those prices on them pieces of equipment so that the small guys can't get them they can't get their hands on them so um I just, you know, long story short, Greg, tonight, I, I've had it on my heart. I, I get the messages every week, people concerned about solar minimum, food shortages, and this and that. Guys, keep so reminded. Keep keep your hope. Oh, agriculture is not going under, in a, you know, today, all right? Things are happening. I, along with other real farmers on YouTube, warn people when when things are coming down the pipe, you know what I mean? Um, I'd be the first to tell you if I thought that there was a, a viable threat in the near future. And right now, the, the only big threat we have in agriculture is corporate egg, corporate industry in bed with government. That is our biggest threat, and right you know, there. I talked about that quite a bit in a video I did called how, government, how our government is really run. So, um... Yeah. Uh, I've, hey, I've run the halls of Congress quite a few times myself, as you might know. So, yeah, yeah there's and there's a revolving door between the regulatee and the regulator. Yeah. That affects all the industries to very detrimentally that these agencies aren't serving you, the people. They're serving the corporate, uh, their corporate masters. Because, yes. Yeah. So, that, you know, they want to, when they retire from their government jobs, they want to go work for the corporations and make the big bucks. And a lot of times, yeah. Corporations will go into the uh, government, and they'll usually float to the top real fast, and yeah. uh, you know, nice peachy jobs in the government. Then they go back to the corporations. So there's yeah, a and that's the thing. door between them. Yeah, Monsanto, your CEOs, are always in D.C. And it, and here's the thing, Greg, they've been under Republicans as well as Democrats. Oh, yeah. So this whole left-right paradigm, I'm going to call it what it is, is bullshit. Oh, they're, that they're, it did. absolutely. It, it, it's it's bullshit you know you got it doesn't matter if you get republican or democrat in there they, they're they're all bought out by the corporations i mean that's just that the clintons had a, a monsanto ceo in uh bush had a monsanto ceo in um, oh yeah trump even trump even had corporate C, ceos in so you know guys we just we just got to be sober-minded about these things and 
And I know there's a lot of talk about China and China is buying up land, Greg. My, um, some of my closest neighbors, and here's the thing, Greg, get this. They're 55, 58, 60. They have no second, they have no kids. Now these are third generation farmers, but they either have no kids or they don't have any kids that wanna take over the farm, right? They're right at the cusp of retirement. They're getting letters from the Chinese government to wanna to buy their land here in Wisconsin. Oh and the, thank God, my there, there's no way my neighbors are selling their land to the Chinese government. They would die before they did that. But I've seen the letters, Greg. One of them, my, my neighbor, Farmer Jackie, she got them. Now, how does the Chinese government, Greg, know that they don't have the next generation to take over the farm? And how do they know that they're at retirement age? Who's giving them that information? Hey, I got 40 acres in Arizona. And here's a letter from somebody wanting to buy it. I've, I've got three <laughs> letters already. I don't know who they are. I mean, they don't sound, it sounds fairly innocuous, but you don't know who these companies are. But you don't know who it is, you know? Yeah. And you know, it, land is val valuable. We all know if you can afford to buy land, you need to buy it. That's kind of a part of our retirement thing we're gonna start doing next couple well, years. Is, I, is I covered this in a video too. And I'm talking about China and what part of their uh, strategy to take us over is to to actually buy land in every congressional district and, and and put a business or industry in yes so they got their hands uh in the pockets or vice versa of every congressman yes in, in our house of representatives they're, so they're going to be big lobbyists is what to, they'll be yeah yeah they're literally trying to take over our congress through that yep. tactic and that that's part of their stated goal that is in their agenda, so they can basically yeah. turn our Congress into a, a Chinese Congress. So let's hope that yeah. right now, while we're seeing who they really are, is it, or the aggression that they're playing out, that we can put a stop to this. We don't not need to be selling our country out to, to them. No, uh, I'm them. at the point, Greg. You know, back when I was a kid, I was a I was a young child of the '80s. I was a youth of the '90s. And the big talk in the '90s was if you were an isolationist, you were an enemy of the United States, right? Wow. I'm at the point now where I, I do believe in some isolationism. I really do. We have to protect our country. Um, it's it's not just China. I mean, look at what's happening at the border. And you want to talk about agriculture? You want to talk about what affects us as farmers and, and people that want to work in the farming industry? is. And I'm just going to say it. And I'm not a racist. Please don't misunderstand this. But we get illegal Mexicans and it's Mexicans that come up here and they take our jobs. OK, they take our jobs in the agricultural industry. And what ends up happening is that the farm, the farms or the corporate farmers that that have them, they pay them a pittance. They pay them a slave wage. And, you know, I'm not heartless. I feel for these people. They get paid slave wages. They get worked, Greg, 18 to 20 hours a day for nothing. I've seen it firsthand. I've what seen it. What are they paying them? You know, for no, okay. Now if I go into a big farm, all right, uh, who I am, I'm I'm going to get paid no less than 18, 18 to 19 dollars an hour for that type of work. Right? But they will pay them between five and seven dollars an hour. That's it. That's it. That's not and even the, wage. No, and they will work them. I worked at a place, Greg, where I had to work 2 a.m to 2 p.m. in the afternoon, 2 a.m. to 2 p.m., 12 hour shifts with zero breaks. If I had a time once in that to go to the bathroom, I was lucky. Now I will say, hey, this, this is a bunch of crap. You know, we need to have time to sit down, eat. We need to be paid a fair wage if we're working 12 hour shifts. But guess what, the, the, the Mexican can't. They can't say anything for fear of deportation or fear of you know imprisonment, whatever. So it's not just that they're taking our jobs and that they're lowering our wages. Because see, where I would wake $18 a night or 19 an hour, I, I could get that. I can't get that. I, I'm gonna get much less than that. I'm gonna get you know between 14 and 15 an hour if I would get hired at all, because they're not gonna hire me if they can hire illegals. That's that, and that's a fact. Um, and I've seen the the human aspect of it the the human rights as aspect of it um where they're just indebted to these these big facilities these you know the illegals are indebted to them 
And it, it breaks my heart because they are such hard workers, Greg. They are hard workers. They are such hard workers. And, and there they is no, come in working like that. They're actually good people. They're they're they're, down they're very earth. good people. They're down you want to see people. somebody milk they're not the gangsters. They're not gangsters. They're good people. They're down no, they're, they're good people, workers. but they're being a taken. They're being a taken advantage of. But the, the, but it screws up the whole system, Greg. It's and and it's at the end of the day, it's globalism. It's corporatism. It's globalism. We need to get this stuff under control. And there's, there's a website. It's hard to find. It's hard to find Americans that, 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 to, to work these days. Uh, but there's the truth to that, life. Greg. But I'm telling you from, from my perspective, it would not be hard to get America Americans to do these jobs if they were paid right. And the reason Americans aren't paid right is because the illegals are driving down the prices. And this is where I tell people, the government then fixes the food prices low, right? Well, the, the whole system is corrupt. Now you got you got farm hands that aren't making a fair wage. You got Americans that can't pay you can't pay rent on you know nine dollars an hour. You can't you, you can't do that. So well that's the, because the 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 the, the, uh, the small farmers gotta compete against the cardboard feed the corporations put out. Right, right, <coughs> right. That's now what's happening part, is the cardboard. What's happening here and a lot of the hope in Wisconsin is, and see, during the COVID thing, it actually propelled Wisconsin. We always were, our, our people very much backed us. We're very diversified. We got a lot of small CSA farms. We got a lot of uh, farm to, to table uh, restaurants on farms. We got a lot of stuff. And after COVID, we've got more people supporting the small family farms than ever. And we've got actual dairy farms coming out now. Good. We've got Weber's Weber's east of us. We've got we've got multiple small farms that have their own farm stores. They make their own cheese, yogurt, ice cream, butter, and they're selling direct to the com to, oh, to the customer. Yummy. So the farmer yummy. took out the middleman. The farmers took out the and that's what we need. We need farm direct sales. Bingo. And and um that is happening in the last six months in Wisconsin. Um, it, we're seeing more and more farm stores popping up That's and get the best food right there. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it just takes the American people to support them to do it though. You Those know, poor little futures traders can't make a fortune off that. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's where, that's where a lot of the money goes, you know, in the, hand, in the pockets of futures traders. And, yep. and banksters and other other entities like that. It's amazing yep. it's the money they make off the agricultural sector that doesn't yeah. come to the pockets of the farmers. Yeah, the big corporations, the processing facilities, they get a pretty good cut. They know how oh, to yeah. they know how to game it and they're to their advantage, not to the farmers. Right. And even even the grocers don't make a huge cut out of it. it the the grocers are getting, you know, minimal. It 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 is it is the meat packers. It's you know. That are 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 getting most of the brunt of the profits. There, there are several steps in 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 from the farm to the fork in uh, industrial agriculture. Yeah. And the traditional methods. When you're buying right. from the grocery store, there's there are many many steps that food goes to on the way right. from that farm to your fork. But when you buy it straight from the farmer. All that's that's right. out and, you're and Greg, I, I absolutely rebuke the person listening right now that says, oh, but there's so many people in the cities that can't do that. Baloney. They can drive. I, there's not many people without vehicles now. And even if they didn't, if they do, there's buses, there's alternative. There are farms that are driving into the cities and, 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 and delivering food to people. Um, you can, the cities. What about Will, Wilbur Allen, Will Allen, what's his name? Uh, in Chicago, who's he's growing so much food off very little land. Yep. In the city of Chicago. Absolutely. There's people growing on rooftops in Chicago. Yep. Yeah, there, there are in many cities. So yeah. there are farms in the cities themselves. And that, that's something we yep. all support. So that's right. Uh, that's right. There's a lot so of not, not, don't believe the nonsense people can't go to the farm. Absolutely the people can go to the farm. <laughs> One final thing I'd remind people of a lot. If you grow out the DeVace family, which grows uh, 7,000 pounds of food per year on a tenth of an acre, you could feed 
something like two to three billion people on the lawns, the yards. Awful lawns. America. Just a lot yards. That's we, right. Forget all our fields and agriculture. We, you know, so a lot of our problems is how we think about things. Right. How things are governed, homeowners associations and stupid That's things right. like that that need to be resisted at every step. Yeah. You can feed your family. You can feed your family almost entirely off of your lawn. The Dervais family does it off a tenth of an acre. And I've talked That's about right. that. I got two videos on them. And I mentioned that my habitat concept <clears throat> capitalizes on that idea because I have to come That's up right. with a concept for a habitat this space, this uh, based on a tenth of an acre. I call it a Dervais yep. in their honor. Yep. <laughs> and Greg, do you want to know who's more so guilty than even the corporations about spreading glyphosate? It's the American citizen and their lawns. Yeah. They're, they are spraying Roundup Ready on their lawns. Oh, so they they're told they got to kill that 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 infernal awful dandelion, yeah. which is the best thing. They should kill the grass, That's pull right. off the grass, and grow dandelions. Yeah, <laughs> there's far more water um, um, pollution being had just off the simple, you know, home than there than there is, you know, elsewhere. If 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 one third of Americans, just one third, decided to 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 make those lawns into to small little uh, places of production. Uh, we would shut down the corporation. We would shut them down. Uh, I love it. I love it. There you yep. go. There you go, guys. There's your rally. Farm your yards. Grow food. That's right. Grow your own. And you can grow it without having to go to the store to buy all these chemicals and all that junk. That's why I promote worm farming. You know, that, that's, a, yep. that's a huge way around you. You don't need the chemical fertilizers. You can just use worm tea to help with that's pest right. control. There are so many things you can do that's natural. I don't use any chemicals in my garden. So, and, and you don't have to either. Uh, there is so much That's you can right. do. And, and, and watch uh, channels like Stacy, watch mine. I'll be coming up with more videos. And yeah, I haven't done many videos lately myself because of uh, trying to get my worm farm going again. And I'm behind on my planting and my taxes. Well, I was planting in tax season, got to be at the same time. That's awful. You know, is that, is that trying to kill a Stacy? I hate that. The worst time you have to do taxes <laughs> is when you're supposed to be planting stuff. And well, <laughs> I've been graced with a, a wonderful husband that does that for me, and I don't have to worry about that. I don't want a husband. I'm sorry. I just, I just, keep, I just hand him the receipts, and and that's and he takes care of it. Um, so I've been blessed that way. But good for you. Good for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass on getting a husband myself. I don't <laughs> need one of those. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. You don't, Greg. <laughs> Maybe one day a wife, uh, you know, if they could truly put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a few out there that think they that they might could, and it, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to be willing to work if you want to be in my house. <laughs> get, yep, get you a good, strong Proverbs 31 woman. That's what you need. I used yep. to tell people I needed a wife who was like a mule. Uh, 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 strong and ugly because I should work. <laughs> well, you know, this is what I tell people. You know, I tell men all the time if you find a woman that will stand by your side and be your helpmate, that's, you, that's, that's yeah, what you yeah. need. Amen. Man was not Amen. meant to be alone. That's Amen. that, and that's Amen. a fact. Amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. So my, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll sort it out, but right now I'm so busy. It's just hard to, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. You know, that there's, there's some interest in those areas, but you know, it takes work and time to me to, 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 to figure out what's right. So you know what's going to happen now, Greg, you're going to get bombarded by um, offers from women in, in the comments. <laughs> tall blonde seeking tall, long uh, redheaded man. <laughs> you watch, I'm going to be watching. Oh, hey, I'm already getting to Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, hey, there's some good prospects <laughs> that's good that's good so uh uh yeah and and you know some of them are regulars to the channel so um and you know one, one in particular but you know we'll just have to see it, it, it for me it, it's it, this is a process that takes time and yeah and, it uh, does just, just make sure you meet in a public place just don't meet just meet in a public place yeah, my mind <laughs> is so wrapped around things I got to do right now, it's just hard for me to stretch it right now. I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to get this Freedom Restoration Foundation going. I just redid my website for, if, if anybody has a thing, go to greengregs.com. And uh, I, this is my website for selling worms. 
But what I've done is I've included a lot of my gardening homesteading videos on there because you go to my channel, it's just hard to find. I got so much wide dispersed content. Right, right. So I've got a, a, a I've got a page just for worm, uh, for vermiculture, worm, you know, worms. I've sure. got a page for it covers gardening, microgreens, and aquaponics, and I still got videos to add to that. I'm not done building that page, but you know, it's pretty selective, and I've got a page just on uh, wild edibles and I've got videos to add to that too. That's that's a great idea to have that right on your website. I'll have to check that out. I was on your website a year ago, look, checking out your worms it's and stuff totally, like that. It's totally different now. My website is just completely cool. different from what it did. I got some, I, I did bring forth some of the verbiage and content, but I've tried to make, you know, I modernized it, you know, more for, for the, you know, the, the style that younger people are expecting. Hopefully it looks good on a mobile phone. And yeah, my website was really clunky, hard to update. I can go in and change things. On that was one of my problems. Postage went up on me six times. Yeah, everybody loved my great prices, but it was killing me selling those worms. Yeah, yeah. Postage yeah. Went up six times, and, and my website was so clunky, it was just hard to, to modify it, especially on the fly. It's like uh, when it gets hot in the summer, if I'm finding the post office is killing the bigger orders, I can shut just that part down and keep other stuff going. Or I can start adding in product releases. I might start selling uh, my turmeric through my website. I might sure. start selling garlic through my website because I can ship that stuff. I may yeah. start adding worm castings uh, or, 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 or uh, there's some there's some ideas for things that are kind of like a uh, solid granular form of worm tea. Well, I'm solid. telling, I, I, I'm just, just a hint, Greg, as a farmer, worm castings, that's where the profits are at. Oh yeah. We, we got a, we got a worm guy up here, um, about 45 minutes West. That's how he makes all of his profits just off the worm castings and farmers will pay big money for a 50 pound bag of worm castings. Cause it'll go a long way, you oh, know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, it, uh, Greg, if I was going to buy one thing from you, it would be worm castings. That's what I would buy. I'd you know, be in a worm casting. Oh, I am in the worm casting business. I'm back in it. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's all rolling again. I just hadn't put that on my website, but at some time I will. I just got to figure out how I want to handle that for shipping and, and things like that. But the best deal to get worm casting is just come if you're anywhere in my areas, come see me, call me. Yeah. Uh, and my and you send if you send the worm castings, they're dried, right? You got them real dry. Yeah, I sell by volume. Yeah. Way. I don't sell by weight. There's so many places yeah. that sell by weight. All that they spray water in it to increase the weight, and so that can right. be gained one way or another. So I think it makes more sense to sell by volume. You're going to get a better deal, and yeah, and that way you're not buying uh, hydrated, artificial hydrated product, which they may be spraying chlorinated water in it, bro. You know. And the chlorine right. will kill all the beneficial bacteria that you're really looking for in your worm castings. Right, right. I actually did a video on um, uh, hay bale or straw bale gardening. And one of the keys to success with that, which I don't suggest actually doing it because of the, the amount of um, effort you have to put into it and you have to keep feeding it. You know, you have to keep feeding it, keep feeding it um, because it's not like the soil. You know what I mean? But one of the keys to that success success of that is a five gallon pail of worm castings oh, yeah. wet and and you plant that seedling right directly into those worm castings yes that's the beauty of worm castings you, uh, that's what i do i plant straight in worm cast you can't do it with cow yep. manure because cow manure will burn your crop up now worm castings oh, actually yeah. has more nutrition in it but the beauty of the worm casting is uh when a worm poops and this one's called a casting they actually cast it and it's got a mucus around it and so mm -hmm. it dissolves slowly over time. So it don't burn your plants up. It provides a, mm -hmm. a nutrition right at the rate they need it. And it's like yeah. Mother Nature invented time release uh, long before milk will grow came out with it. <laughs> yes. Like, Mother Nature was already there a long time before that. Yeah. Was casting. So that's what's the beauty that's of the right. worm. Casting. And so the worms actually cast their poop. That's why they're called castings. And they dissolve yeah. slowly over time. So plants grow like gangbusters in it. Don't burn it. You'll never, ever burn your plant up with worm castings. And uh, they, they got all the needs. No, the no. And, and the most of That's right. And the best thing is they have the beneficial bacteria. Worms carry very specific beneficial bacteria in their guts. They break down the nutrients that's already in your soil to make them more readily available to the plant roots. Yes, yep. And worm that, tea is a symbiotic, yep. Yeah.
I Absolutely. People, you don't see a big bird flying over a forest, spraying it with stuff to make the forest grow. It's all handled in the soil through the bacteria and mycelium networks. Yeah. In my, my network That's of mycelium. right. It's like it's a dendritic type network, like in your brain cells, like in your, your neurons form. Yeah. And uh, they actually transport yeah. nutrients. They will transport nutrients to the plant roots. They had a beneficial bacteria. What the plants yeah. do? Yeah. like that. So much. Even even water. Mm -hmm. The plants like that so much. The yeah. Even plant... water. The the plant. I'm sorry, we had a little legs and lacks yeah. in the, the the video. I was going to say even even water. The the plant can't absorb uh liquid water or retain it without mycelium and without the good bacteria it allows the plant for for absorption uh and that's and that's why with the the the, the dead raped soil of the industrial agriculture right that's why they're having right. to water and you know because they can't absorb it through the soil here's one other thing um, the plants actually put sugars out through the roots to feed the bacteria and the mycelium but in that dead rape soil you mentioned, it ain't there. It's devoid. So they're feeding not, it to nothing. That's right. So they're, so that's right. kind of a waste. The plants are trying to feed it. They're looking for it, and it don't come. Right. And so what do you do? So because in, in the natural system, the plants get their nitrogen and all the, the, the things they need at the rate they need mm -hmm. it. But what happens is farmers are, are going over and spraying this stuff in large quantities. And you over you, you, you to make up for the fact they can't provide it all the time. They hit them with too much at first. So too much nitrogen or too little are both ba bad for the plants. Yeah. Well, and the plants are weakened. They're not growing at their optimal set because the plants are weakened, their immune system's down, and so they're more readily to be attacked by right. insects. Now, the fact they're getting yeah. attacked more by insects, they're spraying chemicals to control the, the insects. So they just keep spraying all this junk yeah. all the time. Yeah. And so what are you eating with well, this uh, cardboard industrial nutrition devoid food is a lot of chemicals on top yeah. of the cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly yep oh greg you know your stuff that's why i like you <laughs> ditto ditto and you know I, I appreciate what you bring i have a lot the utmost respect for you stacy you're a young woman with a good head on her shoulder and uh you you, you do love freedom and you, you love the country you love the lord you, you're on top yes. of things and so I, I have that, like I said, utmost respect for you. That's, that's why I invited you from the get go to be in our uh, Freedom Restoration yeah. Foundation because I knew you were you 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 were cut out for that. Well, you, you know, Greg, I I just don't I don't want people living in fear. We 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 can't be fear sowers. You know what I mean? We have to be. Uh, uh, we have to we have to sow wisdom. We have to sow wisdom to people and truth. You know, I I am I do believe in Jesus Christ, and He's the uh, truth. You know, sets you free. And, 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 and that's, and that's a fact. So if we have wisdom and we have truth, we don't have fear. So um, a lot of people misunderstand a lot of my videos because what I'm trying to do when I post videos is not, I'm not fear monger. I'm trying to get people to prepare. No. I, I want to yeah. tell them what yeah. the risks are. There are a lot of risk in our world today. But right. uh, if you look on the military side, uh, internationally and internally, right. and domestically, we have enormous risk. Right. But the way you deal with that is you prepare for it yourself. You get ready. And one of the best things that you can do to get ready is to grow your That's own right. I tell people that over and over. And, and, and prepper, right. I did a video say, why is a prepper going to die? Because, you know, when, when uh, uh, all the big game gets taken out, you know, in a few months, like it will, and you got these big, right. big four bang bangs, uh, anything you, 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 you point at it is going to be nothing but a ball of fur. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, right. You're going to be hung, it's, it's, hungry. It's, yeah, you're and it's great to have the food preparedness and to 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 buy the food boxes and things like this. But you also have to be able to replenish that. You have yeah. to be able to produce your own because yeah. when it runs out, it's gone. You and know, you need the food preparedness for because one, it's a good investment, like we talked earlier, and two, right. uh, crops. You know, until you really get your game down, growing food isn't as straightforward as you think. Uh, <laughs> there are good years and there are bad years. And when you think you've got it all half-head, people, oh, yeah, we grew all this stuff. And you did it once or twice. But the third year, the deer discovered yeah. your crop or something happened. Yep. It hit by yep. form. you got to learn how to have reserves. You don't grow just what you eat in one year. You better have yeah, reserves. You have a good year. You, you know, if you have a good, like, for, for instance, tomato year, you put, you put up 2,000, 3,000 pounds of tomatoes and you store it away for four years. Bingo. Because you, you might not have it for another. 
Yep. That's what all the old timers did. Yep. And you have excess seed. You save the seed. Seed, yep. seed is gold. Seed yep. is gold. And, and, and Absolutely. you get the good seed, you, you keep raising the same stuff over and over, and it will acclimate to your farm, your climate. That and is it. Keep uh, using the best plants and saving the seeds from them, and they're more and more acclimated to where you grow at, and you will grow yeah, your yeah. own varieties. And that's the, the way The seed in the crop is just like us, Greg. Like, now you're in the South, right? You have yeah. acclimated to that climate. I go in the South, man, I am going to wilt and I am going to die. <laughs> I have been acclimated to 2040 below. I thrive in this climate. See, we're not so far away. Everything is connected, Greg. Everything is connected. Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. <laughs> I was born in Alabama. I was I grew up here. I was out in the hay fields hauling hay at 100 degrees, you know, throwing these bells up in the uh, back of a truck right. bed and listen and and sitting behind a hot tractor engine cutting, raking and belling it. And I went in Alaska and lived two years. And when I came back, now I mean, look at me, I'm Nordic, okay? My yes, ancestry yes. is actually Nordic. I have tons of Viking ancestry. Yep, yep. So, that's why I, I, I like to have, you know, have a little fun and do my Woden's Woken when, uh, Woden's Wednesday. I'm going to have to quit using the word because yeah. that, that's become another connotation that's not my intention. <laughs> Wondrous Wednesdays. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just having a little fun, guys. So, but the thing is, uh, I came back to Alabama. I was driving my pickup truck, which was, you know, power steering, automatic transmission, very effortless type job. With both windows rolled down through the town I was born in and got heat exhaustion. Stacy yeah. was like a limp noodle. I was doing no physical activity, just driving through the town I was born in. And I couldn't believe that four <laughs> years earlier I was out in these fields doing all this stuff. And Stacy yeah. was brutal. Oh, I heard it was going to be hard when I returned from Alaska, but it didn't kill me. <laughs> it was brutal. But, and, but that's the thing, Greg, if, if you took that seed, let, you know, you, there's an example, you went to Alaska, you came back, it took you a bit to get back into the swing of things. Seeds will do the same thing. I can handle if it. I send hey, my seed, yeah, I don't even have AC in my home. I can handle it now, but holy you smoke. You can handle if I, it. If I went back to Alaska to live two, I was in my 20s then. If I went back to Alaska and lived there two years again, and we if we had the same kind of cold weather we had when I was there, I might move to Wisconsin. <laughs> I don't think I'd come all the way back to Alabama. That was too brutal. Yeah, and I'm 61. I don't think I'd want to do that again. <laughs> you, you, you have to kind of go down slowly, right? <laughs> exactly. I'd come down slowly. Yeah, I ain't moving straight back into it. I can handle it now, but holy smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ex uh, yeah. But, well, Greg, I, I think that was pretty much all I had for this evening. Um, is there anything else you any questions you had or anything like that or well we talked about the power grid and, and and how that can really impact us and we've talked about that in the past that's one of my favorite topics talk because i know how weak it is i know how vulnerable right. it is. i've chaired two power grid defense conferences that's my uh, podium placard i am an electrical engineer i do yes. work system safety oh maybe i <laughs> <laughs> So these are topics I understand. Yeah. And, and you know, given my engineering background, my military background, I've had military background. I've you know I've been in the army. I worked for the army. I worked on army projects as a contractor, and, mm -hmm. or something that you know, and on the NASA side of it now. But I'm, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been around. I've done a lot of stuff. So I understand the weakness of our grid. I understand its, right. its vulnerabilities. And I understand how a lot of the industry is trying to paper that over and make it like it's not real. I know darn better because I know the real experts who, who tell us this stuff. They're getting lawyers and, and, and other people out trying to tell you the other story and people that aren't expert in the system. I know the experts and they all sell that say the same things. Yeah. But this is something you do need to prep. You do need to prepare. Yeah. And you did touch yeah. on the concept of, of, of conflicts. Uh, war, there's a lot of prospects for that right now. I mean, I've never seen it, you know, in my life, I've never seen it like it is right now. Never, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, wars and rumors of wars. I mean, it's just chaos in, in all directions, yeah. And all um, directions, every direction yeah. that you turn, it's like you know, looking at the train at the tunnel, it's like you're in the, we're in a node 
where all the tones are coming together and this train's coming from every direction. Yep. So that's why we're going to keep our eyes wide open and head on the swivel, which I tell right. followers all well, the time. Again, and I'm telling, I, I tell people this on my channel all the time, get out there, drive 20 minutes outside of your town, get on, on Google and look up family farms that produce meat, family produce, go support them, buy off the farm. Because I'm telling you what, if you sow into their business today, if you support that family business today, they are going to support you when you need to be supported. Bingo. That's how you want to make sure there's somebody producing and That's they're right. when it all breaks down, support them today. I tell my people, vote with your dollar. Buy That's right. And then it goes not just for local farmers, it goes for local artists and tradesmen. That's right. No, and and I wouldn't even go to corporate. The corporations that do electrical supply and so no, go go to the individuals. Right. They're being hammered by all kind of regulations, right. certifications they have to file, and yet they're, they're way they'll give you way better service than most of these big corporations. That's right. And, and here, because uh, here's the thing, Greg, there there are some out there preppers. I'll just call it the doomsday prepper, whatever, whatever you want. There are people out there that believe when the shit hits the fan, they're going to be lone wolves. They're going underground. And everybody's going to be in for themselves. And oh, the, the, you know, the hordes are, and, and these things may happen. But guess what? Guess what? Here's the thing the American the farmer will never turn their back on their community. Historically, it has never happened. Never. That's why right. well, farmers, are, farmers are patriotic. That's right. And that's how they make their living in the first place. Like you said, what's a farmer do? Sells produce. You have produce that's that you send to others. You don't have a farm. You have a hey, homesteads are good. At the minimum, you should at least homestead. Right. But but uh, that's what the farmer does. That's their that's their, their lifeblood. And farmers right. really care about what they're doing. So um, yeah. and we care about our community. I do what I do because I want to produce healthy, uncorrupted food for for the my community, for my family, for the body tell, of Christ. Tell us. That's tell, tell us. Just tell tell my channel. How much land you you farm and how many people you feed with it? Oh, just gardening? Yeah. Listen, I only have about an acre total. That's it. And I'm producing, I, I produce for about three dozen families, but with the farm store, it's far more than that. I mean, you know, you got people that come in every day. I got, you know, five to 10 families a day that come in to buy produce. So with everything, about a hundred families, one you know, acre, off of an yeah. acre. One acre. There's people right. have yards bigger. Right. Than that. And and I'm also right. producing for my family where I'm putting up four four years of food at a time every year off of that same acreage. Now I have 20 acres, but the rest of that's in hay, and, you know, for animals and 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 for raising, you know, meat birds and this stuff like that. But yeah, I don't I don't have a whole lot. I do permanent raised beds with a hay mulch system, uh, which as we discussed earlier, promotes a good mycelium and a good bacteria, you know, good good bacteria and microorganisms and and a good microbiome in the soil. So that I, I, you know, the only thing I do is I have my manure compost that I have for my animals. I go through. I have one scoop, you know, every foot. I go put that, and then I cover it in hay. I don't till. I have a, it's a no-till system, um, and. Um, I don't have any problems. I do have a large um, uh, 47 foot long uh, high tunnel greenhouse. Uh, that is where I am producing all my tomatoes and my bell peppers. So I, the biggest problem we have up here is, is by October, we, you know, like the first week in October this year, we, we froze. Okay. Well, we could still have tomatoes and peppers all the way to, to like November 25th because you got a pepper plant and you've got 25 little peppers like that and it freezes, it's done, right? So I'm, I have the greenhouse just to extend the season so that I can get these little peppers that big, you know? Um, but uh, it's, it's uh, my goal is, is, is to have a one-stop shop here, you know, with the, the, the meat products, the eggs and the produce and, um, on top of that, I just, I, I work with my, my 12 year old milking cows, milking, if I milk five days a week, 200 cows, my daughter, she, uh, she feeds all the babies on the farm and she dips, she puts the milk around here and there, but she's pretty, she's pretty small yet. She can't lift it yet, but I absolutely, I, I, I 
love my life, Greg. I, I'm connected to the earth. I'm connected to creation. And um, I grew up on a farm and I wouldn't trade anything in the world. Oh. So I think that's the best for any kid. I think every kid ought to yeah. grow up on some kind of farm. And that may be the best reason just to grow in your backyard is so the kids can get connected to the soil and connect yeah. to nature, the educational aspect of it. Everybody should, should have that in their life somewhere, somehow. Yeah. And if you can't do it, at least take your kids to the farm, a farm, and let yeah. them spend some time there. I mean, that's it, right. It is such an enriching experience to be on a farm to see animals, to see food. Yeah. We had we had uh, chickens, we had hogs, we had horses, we had cattle. I had ponies. Uh, just you name it, it was there, and we ate right. you know, from our eggs, from the chickens. Well, and animal animal husbandry teaches compassion. It does. It teaches it does. respect. It, it it responsibility. There was no it's, food it's, lots. Our, 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 our right. cattle were, 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 you know, pretty much tame except for the Jersey cow. She was always a, right. A, a, right. But, but when it came time to milk her, all I had to do was walk out in the field and or the pasture and stand behind her, and she just went straight to the barn. <laughs> she just doesn't get fed, you know. That's all yeah. you had to do. And we had a different calls for every animal. You know, you had to, you, you knew the call, and those animals knew that was for them. They, they'd go run into wherever you was going to feed them at. Every, every animal had its appointed place to be fed, and the appointed call you'd call them with. And then that's it, right. Well, Use the same calls or something similar in Wisconsin that we used in Alabama. <laughs> yeah. I bet. It's yeah, a we. Yeah. Uh, yep. No, that that the an, the animals are what make this place gives it character. You know, oh, yeah. I, I love I love my gardening. Um, I design uh, permaculture gardeners for uh, gardens for people. Um, I one of my biggest jobs that I did was for a, a massive golf resort here in Wisconsin. They have a, golf resorts all over Wisconsin, but I I produced I, I designed and and established a permaculture garden in what is considered a desert in the middle of Wisconsin. It's just sand. It's just sand, and that garden is thriving and it's the same method i use here on my home on my farm as in the desert that is is hour and a half south of here well i'm about so, to set up a farm on a, in a desert in a high desert in arizona so yeah you're welcome to come down and give me all the pointers you want i'd <laughs> love to greg i would love to absolutely I'd, I'd be happy to do that absolutely happy to do that because uh, I'll take pictures of the place up here and show you. I mean, it's got sand dunes. It's flipping sand dunes in wow. Wisconsin. So, wow. but. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Wisconsin truly has a lot of variety. I have oh, been yeah. to Wisconsin. I've, I've been to every state in the union except for Minnesota, Hawaii, and the uh, states that are in the north uh east of new york state you know the well new trust state. me you're not missing much in minnesota i've been to minnesota and it's not <laughs> okay don't get me wrong the the northern lakes you know the, the lakes well hey the we lakes. had here in alaska oh my god we had yeah. lakes in alaska twin cities stay as far away as you can I... <laughs> I, you know, there's not many the only city i ever saw that i was impressed with was toronto i i hear it's a beautiful city so clean Bing. And I used to go up there for one of my jobs I had uh, quite often and stay a couple of weeks at a time. Toronto was very clean. Uh, yeah. I was there at least. There was no crime to speak of. Uh, it was a big city. It was a multi-ethnic city. People from all over the world. But Them Canadians are nice people, they say. And that's probably why there was no crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was just a different dynamic than what we have here in the United States. A different yeah. culture. A lot of it is cultural. There's a lot of it's what we get in our head, you know, which says that we can solve all of our problems if, if we just think right and, and act right about it and learn things yeah. and take the right lessons. We can we can fix these problems. And and that lies my and therein lies my optimism because I do these a lot of the videos I do so people know and are aware of the problem, so they will prepare. And I, but also as you know, we're working on uh, developing these survival tribes. And also trying to keep things uh, freedom oriented with our freedom restoration so foundation. So we're very proactive in trying to have a better future. But we do have a lot of hurdles to get through, and you can't get through these hurdles unless you know them and understand them. And so talking right. about them, it's not fear mongering. It is it's educating people to be right, aware right. of what's coming. What's but here's there. the thing, Greg. The Freedom Restoration Foundation, what I'm talking about here, we're talking about things that we know about. 
that that we've been are experienced in. We're not talking about obscure articles on topics and jumping to the sky is falling and and that's what sows fear is unfounded unrational reactions, okay? That, yeah. that come from lack of wisdom and understanding in the situation. When you come from wisdom and understanding, now you're sowing more wisdom and understanding and, 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 and it's, it's about preparedness and it becomes about being a sober mind and being wise, not fear mongering. Well, um, I know a lot of people, Stacey, who, who react to every article and every little tidbit they see, but you know, once you kind of understand what's going on, you get the big picture. You don't have to react to every little thing that comes out. That's right. Just spend your entire day just going, ah, consuming that and doing nothing. Yeah. So what our organization is about is taking action. That's right. We are proactive right. to take action to preserve our freedoms. And the the, 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 the the communities that we'll be founded are there, you know, to be able to survive, survive but also thrive. Because if it don't hit the fan, what are you going to get? You got a, a strong community that can be resilient. They can be self-supporting right. their own food. It'll be a great environment. So it's right. both sides of it. And I really believe we need our own economy amongst ourselves and each other. To, to Absolutely. So all this stuff that the elites want to throw at us, we don't need uh, most of what they want to throw at us. They claim a solutions. It's not solutions. It's just stuff that will empower them even more. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, local community with their own commerce, you know, that people want to talk about the blockchain and then, you know, all this, this, nonsensical made up fiat money and and fake money on the internet whatever it is but i'll tell you what you can't eat any of it greg you can't even eat you can't eat the dollar you can't eat gold you can't eat silver but you can eat an egg you can eat an egg and that egg is worth far more than any rubies or gold or silver you know so all my so, investments are going into my farms, and I think that's because I know when when the tough gets when it gets tough gets when it gets tough, that's when we can survive. That's how. But the that, fact that is, is it. true true wealth comes from the from the land. Bingo, bingo. and yeah, that we, is it. Of course, there are those that want to take our land away from us, and that's why we have the Freedom Restoration Foundation. Right, there are really right. Those out there, they want to take our land, and there are people out there who would like to tell us we can't raise animals. They do exist. Right, they're out there. And, and they would do anything they can to, to, to take us to that point. And some of them include people who, uh, you know, are highly invested in fake meat, maybe. <laughs> oh, right, right. For that. For, let's see, one final question. What do you think about Bill Gates being the biggest uh, farmland owner in America and buying more? What do you think about that? Um, it's, it, it doesn't bother me in the least. Not saying he's a good guy, but let him do what he's going to do and you do what you're going to do. You know what I mean? It's well, there's there's over the 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 history of America, there has always been them who are rich that think think that they can change or whatever manipulate the society with that they're in through whatever programs that they're in. Okay, um, but Bill Gates will never own all the land in the United States. That's right. And much much of the land that he owns. They want to say it's agriculture, but some of it's not. Okay. Um, and and here's another aspect of that. Just because Bill is bought land in agriculture and they say he's getting into it does not mean that he is a farmer. No, what do rich people do? They make investments, right? So making an investment in land or or business or farming, whatever. It, most of what he is is he's just an investment person okay now the 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 whole thing about him covering up the sun and all that i mean yeah that's mad scientist but you know what he's reaping what he's sowing greg he's getting a divorce from his wife it was just announced this week that man has sowed um evil and lies his life his marriage is splitting up and you know what we just need to be about i always this is what i tell my fellow believers in jesus christ we need to be about the father's business God's will for our life and don't worry about the wicked people or the evil people or the lost people. You walk your path, run your path, stay focused. Leave those types of people to the to the creator. Let him deal with that. Yeah, and if you can you grow know? your own food and take care of yourself, you got what you need. If we got community, right. one guy's the, the, the you know, or some bunch of people are growing food, 
and somebody else is a blacksmith or whatever skill set we need, right. we're set. We're set. We, we, can, right. we can maintain ourselves. We don't need all this other stuff. I mean, like, like we just said, you can feed, you know, two to three billion people from our lawns alone. So we can take care of ourselves. We have to, but we have to have perspective. And then right. this concept for a home. You build that home, you can totally take care of your energy and food and just about every need you got in a home. And it's unless you get you know a straight direct hit, it's resilient against all form, you know, uh, a lot of radiation, uh, fire, right. wind. It's going to be a lot better home for a lot of that stuff. So I'm going to be coming out with more stuff. I got a bunch of architectural drawings on that. I'll be releasing in the video soon. Uh, I'm, really tons excited. Of concepts. Huh? I'm really excited to see what you're going to build down in Arizona. I, I would like to see some sort of off-grid. It's going to start simple, maybe a little shack at first. because Well, that, there's limited. nothing wrong with but that, we'll, but I, we'll I, hope, you take us on, I yeah. hope you take us on that adventure with you because. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to try that, but I have, I'm not giving up my Alabama farm either. I'm going to be back and forth, but I've just got to find the right people to help me work these places. Right. So, and So that I can go back and forth and make these things happen. And that's great uh, i gotta have good people to watch things so i feel secure in going back and forth but I won't, yeah it took, i won't come back and find the place missing <laughs> that's right that's right so all right well that's a good input but the, the the real key is your future lies in your hands it's up to you to be self-resilient you yeah. are you and your connection with your lord and, and so i tell people all the time stay centered never panic and this is what i'm talking yeah. about yeah considered set your priorities and your priority is to be as self uh as self-supporting self-sustainable as you can be and, and join right. with groups and people and, and families that, that that have communities that are set in that way that's the best way you can do it and stay and, and grow in that direction that's what i advocate is self-resiliency self-sufficiency yeah. and and, and in the, that's the true path to independence and freedom is to be able to stand on your own two feet that's right right that's right okay, personally course, diversified course. be personally diversified bingo bingo that's right, right Stacey, i believe we have covered the waterfront we've talked for two hours here i hope it's not so long this won't scare too many people off from watching so if somebody has watched for two hours what would you like for them to tell us in the notes below so they that we'll know they watched the whole video what would you like for um them to give a thumbs up you know a thumbs up and a happy face or something let us know and and uh and and we'll give you a high five back <laughs> how about this how about this hey i love stacy's pink john deere hat <laughs> ah, this is actually from my grandma who passed away so oh, hey. wow wow so yeah that would be good so, something oddball unique you know so the, well now we'll really yeah. know they watched this point yeah uh, where did who did I get my hat from? I got it go. from my grandma who has passed on. So if you can, if you can say where I got my hat from, we know you watched the whole thing. Bingo, bingo. There you go. All right, Stacy. I always enjoy it when we do a, a, a one of these shows. It's always interesting and informative, and uh, yeah, you know, we each bring some unique perspectives here uh, to, to these programs. So I hope everybody else enjoys it half as much as I, at least I have. <laughs> <laughs> so that i'm going to stop the recording we can hang on for a minute stacy so everybody sure. i'm gonna say thank you for watching please check out stacy's channel sustainable stewards subscribe to it do it now <laughs> bang that update notification bell and click all now if you've watched it this far you definitely got to be interested and if you're not subscribed to mine and you've watched this far please do the same for mine but, and, 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 you know, Stacy is, is the salt of the earth. I really appreciate her. So thank you, Stacy. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, thank you Greg. All right. My fellow swivel heads with that, we're going to say good night.